Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the D2 Talks. My name is Fabio Palvelli and on this channel every week we bring you the best talks with some of the greatest artists and companies from the archivist industry. So if you're new here, please do consider subscribing. This week I have the pleasure to have with me Nikos Nikolopoulos of Creative Lighting. Nikos has been very influential both as an artist and as a trainer in the field of archivists and his courses are used by some of the most successful designers from the business. I am very excited to have Nikos on the show this week. He's going to share with us a little bit about his journey and experience doing this job and I really hope that you are going to enjoy this talk as much as I did in making it. As always, enough of me blah 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 enjoy this talk let's do it everything okay dude man everything is great and thank you for inviting me to your channel no absolutely I, but... you know it's uh we've been talking quite a while you and i oh by, by the way i have with me nikos of creative lighting um nikos how do you pronounce your last name Oh man it's hard for me to say it as well yeah. <laughs> it's nikolopoulos nikolopoulos Nikolopoulos, okay. Sometimes they say Nikolopoulos, sometimes yeah, just Poulos. you know, <laughs> because that, that's the problem all the time, you know, I, I say... I, I, was, I, I was a meeting with London um, back in the days, and I remember Demian, the creative director, she was like, how are we going to pronounce your surname? Nico Smith. <laughs> Let's just say Nico Smith. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Don't go down this road of Nikolopoulos. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, dude. Also, because we've been knowing each other now for a while. Yeah. You've been coming to, to the D2 conference. You spoke once. Um, that was a good experience. It was a great talk. I remember people were like, oh, my God, I really, I remember the, some of the guys from Mir saying, oh, my God, this was a really good talk. Well, thank them. <laughs> <laughs> I admire them as well. So. But it's anyway, beautiful. one of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on the show, it's because um, you know you are also an educator, just like me. You are mm -hmm. very committed in the field of like uh, forming new talents and teaching new uh, new upcoming people in the industry. And yeah. I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit, you know, how did you get into uh that part of the business i mean you were working for a very good very successful firm in london which i think it's yes. called cityscape right Cityscape digital yes correct and you guys were doing fantastic work i remember i mean you still do but we're at the moment working. we're still at, partners at the moment uh, you're only doing the 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 teaching and training right yes it was a big step for me um I mean, the idea actually came at Cityscape while I was working there as a GI director. The exciting thing is that after five years, I wanted to come back to Greece. It was a personal decision, you know, uh, a missing family, friends, sunlight, many different things. But I wanted to come back to Greece. You know, I, I, I'm Greek. I love Greece. It was a good experience to be in London. And I went to Dan Harper, the managing director, and I said to him, you know, I like you guys. We're doing good stuff together. I want to move, not now, in a year. So I want to give you a notice in advance and see what we can do together while if, if we can do something together when I go back to Greece. And we start looking what does this can be. It can be maybe making images from Greece, yeah, for Cityscape. But we realized it can be something bigger. Because when I was at Cityscape, we developed this philosophy of creative lighting. Me and Damian, he's also a founder. We were looking how to make beautiful images for architects and designers. And we developed this philosophy and looking at cinematography and we try to bring this knowledge back into CGI world. And every new artist in the studio, I was doing the training for him. So I was involved in the training in-house. And we thought maybe this can be business. Maybe we can grow this because this philosophy will prove in-house that it works. We start getting better quality. We start getting speed. We start innovating techniques. And my passion about light was always there. And me and Damian, that's the connection we have. We're sharing the same passion. Mm -hmm. So we thought after one year of a lot of chats, investigation, research, that this could be a business. And we thought to take it, the risk, any new business is a risk, and for me to run it from here, from my Greek studio. And it went very well. Uh, we, we start by talking to events, of course. We spent two years talking to events. We went to New York and left San Francisco for in-house training. And it was my first training as well, I mean, in a big audience, not just in-house at Seedscape. And Dan came to me 
not just to support me, but to also understand the way of this business can grow, where this can go, and also make notes of whatever issues the architects and designers might have. So we take this all back, all this feedback, and we actually start creating a unique workshop based in London now, not just on site, but in our studio, and bring clients there. Because we have a, a, a course for them to, to learn, which I can explain further. But the thing is, we didn't know where we're going. We thought, okay, let's do training on site at, um, and every month online, every month on site. But then everybody came and they said, wow, that was a good experience. Not just a good training, it was a good experience. That was the first moment we realized we need to take it seriously, we need to go back into research, and we need to develop even better courses for our clients because they want more and they ask more. So that was exciting for me because I realized that I love training. Then I realized that's my life. I, I'm not going back to production. I, it's not a risk anymore. This can be business. So I don't have to worry about, you know, get doing other business on the side. I was like, I want to focus on training. So when they asked, when one of the clients asked for more, it was amazing because now we're driving creative lighting through the feedback we're getting from the members. Mm. So they ask for uh, practical days. They said, I want to bring my laptop and I want to practice. We never thought of that, to be honest. We thought we're going to give them knowledge, they're going to go away. So we deliver, it's, that's why we have chapters. Chapter one, chapter two. Chapter two is more practical. And then we realized, they said, what's next? Of course, we're not ready. What's, what do you mean, what's next? That's, that was it. No, it wasn't. So then we realized that we need to always go back and ask them what they need and provide them with extra knowledge. You cannot leave the client, inspire him and let him go. Where does he go? But if I don't see his work and the progress, I cannot offer him a unique service. And that's why this year we developed the annual packages, which I'm very excited about, because my dream was always to be in contact with the client and engage with him as a learning development, ongoing learning and development. But this requires some sort of like continuous uh, research and development on, on your side, right? Yes. So I just realized this year that I'm becoming a researcher of light. I, I, I think I mentioned that to you. I, I went back to university. This year, I went back to study scenography and lighting design. You see, my passion about light, it becomes a way of life. Now, I need to research. I need to go back reading books. I need to go to see exhibitions, museums, films, theater, everything to understand what is light. This reflects a lot also on your personal life, like I, everything that you post on your uh, Facebook, Instagram, yes. everything always has to, to, to do with light. I mean, it's almost like an obsession. There's nothing I can do about that. It is an obsession. And I, I wake up, the first thing I thought about is light. I, I notice light. I capture it with my camera, with my eyes. I'm trying to analyze it. I'm trying to understand it. It's an ongoing process. This is my daily process, you know. And I will never say that I know about light because I'm learning new things every day. And being back to college, that was a good experience. And I highly recommend it to anyone that have the time or can make time to go back and study again. You know, I wish I knew about uh, light when I was young. I didn't. I'm learning now and I'm learning hard and I'm enjoying it. So if you can go back to college, just do it, guys. Seriously. It's no, it's a, it's a, it's a funny thing that you, that you say so because uh, one of the things that... Um that I happen to read very often on the forums and on groups on Facebook all the time is, you know, the, the, the idea is that rendering engines are making it super simple for people mm -hmm. to be able to make a rendering. It's yeah. at the moment, you know, if you go to B-Ray, if you go to Corona, if you go to uh, Octane, it's a matter of clicking one button. Yeah. The only thing that people don't know is what happens when you click that button you know what yes. is happening in your computer so yeah. understanding lighting although you know for instance when i teach it i do realize that there mm -hmm. are so many people that know so much more about lighting than i might do because i'm not a professional photographer mm -hmm. but of course i have my amount of research i know how to uh, do uh, a lot of the stuff that are needed to uh, make in pro projects. But then you see the work of certain specific artists and you really realize the importance of knowing light, of knowing photography, of yes. knowing cinematography, you know. Yeah. Very often I see also people uh, guiding students on the 
on the idea of making a composition first, as in terms of like balancing the canvas, looking mm -hmm. at the canvas as a uh, startup point, mm -hmm. and then building on top of that. And I think this is fascinating that finally we are talking about renderings as a, as an art and not yes. as a technical thing. You know what I mean? It should be technical. It's art. You know, you, you're making a story through the software and the software is a tool. Of course, I'm always aware of what Corona and NVIDIA is doing and I always want them to bring new stuff, but it does, it's not going to stop me making my art. If they don't, if they don't do it, I can still make art with the software that exists now. Of course, I'm looking for new features, but it doesn't if happen or not, I can do art. And this is very important for me. Whatever they give me, I can deliver an image and tell a story. So we need to focus on the storytelling, not on the so settings of the software or what's coming next. I don't care. Let them do the stuff. I appreciate their work and I should do my work. And then we mix together and we make art. How did the how did you start understanding the the, the importance of light? Because you know, very often I can understand it myself. People say it's a software. You gotta click the buttons. There must be a button that you have to click. When was it that you started to say, okay, this has nothing to do with buttons. This has to do with how you play with elements which are yes. realistic. Well, I think I own this to the cinematography world. When I started breaking down films, uh, me and Damien back in the day, almost a year, we were watching films and analyze them. And we start trying to figure out where the light is coming from, you know, how they get in contrast. Is it the negative field? How they how they're shaping the light, how they're creating the beautiful stories. How can I replicate this without copying? But I need to understand this first. Otherwise, I'm just copying this. So when I start looking at techniques like negative field to get contrast or how to bounce the light or how to block the light, I realized if I bring this knowledge back into the software, everything is easy. Because then I don't care about the render button, I just care where to place the light, direction of light, intensity and color. When you have these principles and play with hierarchy, where's my key light? I never asked this question before. And of course, I've learned from my mistakes. So I, I, if I do an image today, I'm going to ask myself, where is my key light? If I cannot answer that question, the image is going to fail. You need to have hierarchy. Now, when I'm getting this knowledge from going back to paintings like Rembrandt, the night watch, if you've seen it in the museum, he's, he's using focus points, you know, he's directing the viewer, he's telling a story, there is movement in the painting. How can I do that into a CGI? So you go back and study, you learn techniques, you go back to the software, the software is ready for you. The red button is there, but you need to work on yourself, you know. They're doing amazing stuff, I have to work on my start, I have to find my perspective as an artist. Bring this and then press the render button, everything is beautiful. It's fast, it's good, it's nice. So we need to work. And I, I own this to my research back then with Damien, because he helped me a lot as well as an artist. He's also my mentor. He's helping me a lot. He's the way I, I like, I'm starting with mood boards, for example. It's something I learned from Cityscape. If you don't have an idea, you don't open the software. The software is not going to find you anything if you don't have something to say. And every image has a message. You need to be clear in your mind what you're trying to say. And you do that with a mood board. Because the this mood board is, is going to... This is beautiful, you know, you know the, the way you true, just true. described it. It's beautiful. It's, uh, it's true. It's true. Because, it's you know, it's uh, very often you, you hear also clients saying, you know, the software, use the computer, it will take you a second. And, you yeah. know, uh, there is very often like um, this, um, this argument that, you know, computers might take over our jobs. And to certain extents, you see areas where things can improve and will improve for sure. Yeah. But the essence of an artist that I don't think it can be replaced, at least, you know, not at the sensibility of a, of a person, you know, reason why at the moment, even if uh, softwares make it super simple, you mm -hmm. still see renderings that fail incredibly hard yes. on, uh, on delivering the quality because the people don't know where the quality is coming from. You know what I mean? I agree. I totally agree with you. Storytelling will never die, you know. <laughs> An artist will always tell a story with any means. I mean, if, you mean that I cannot make art with Corona 1? Yeah? Give me Corona 1 now, I can go back and make something beautiful. You know, and I'm saying this a lot because people, they need to understand the software is growing, but your knowledge needs to grow on the side as well. Yeah. 
path, you know. I was actually talking to Andre yesterday. I had the request on Sunday, and he responded. And I like this. This means commitment. And that's why we decide, um, you know, our philosophy can be applied to any software, but we have to choose one to demonstrate our methods. And I'm proud that we choose Corona. And I like these guys. And Andra, even Sunday, he was texting me and, and helped me on my task. And I realized, yes, you see, we need to grow on the side, helping each other. I'm developing my knowledge. He's developing his software. We're both creatives in different specs. But when we mix, this is poetry. This is magic, you know? Yeah. No, I know it's uh, it's. Uh, I think it's what you just said. It's really. I really hope that people understand the core of this discussion because, to be honest with you, you know, sometimes if I, if I see it the way society is kind of evolving, at least in the mentality that everything should be pre-made and you know uh, everything, it's super simplified. I still think that this is just a. Um, you know, you still need the competence. This yes. is what I'm trying to to get. Uh, need, yeah. I, I have a couple of questions regarding the business cool. side of things. I mean, you know, now you're basically an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, I'm is, doing <laughs> what, what is it like to be? I mean, this morning I was listening to a podcast with uh, this Canadian philosopher uh, mm -hmm. that says that, you know, everybody who is an artist is also an entrepreneur because the only way to make art is for you to be able to do your own thing and yeah. sell it to somebody. And this is the real struggle. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that, that part. You mean how to sell a bit of business side? Yeah. Like, you know, your, your personal take on, on that aspect of, you know, yes. having mm -hmm. a company. Uh, I, I think, this year is going to be our best year because we finally understood that you cannot make the product and sell the product yourself. I mean, I should be focusing more on my art, not about selling the product. Okay, I can do it, but I think it was wrong. So we had the, you met Son, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Son, he's head of marketing now and he's doing an amazing job. I mean, I, I love the way he talks to our clients and talking about the product I create with them. And I think, when a new business, you have to respect that, that you cannot do everything. You know, it's like an artist doing modeling, post production, rendering, whatever, but you need to have different um, aspects of business. So I'm trying to focus on, on, on growing the business creatively, and Sean is going to try to find a way to sell the business creatively. And we're working together now every day, and this is the first time we're going to have two events this month, and I think all this to Sean because he knows better than me and better than anybody how to sell the product. I create it, but it doesn't mean I can sell it. So I think that's a good news for us. And I'm hoping he will be able to uh, watch having also a, a workshop in Barcelona. Again, it's I went there to present, but Sean closed the deal. You need somebody with his expertise to be able to close the deal. My job is to inspire people and also to train them. If I spend time on selling the product, it means I'm not creating something new or I'm not innovating on techniques. I think this is wrong. So I think this is the new, the future of creative lighting is to be able to separate. Somebody's going to sell it creatively, somebody's going to grow in the business, and somebody's going to keep innovating techniques, which is my job as a researcher, and bring you new stuff every day. So with Son on board, and that's why I want to mention the annual packages, is that now we are in position to create engagement. You know, you come with an annual package, it means you're getting refreshers. You have a, a, a regular Q&A. You can contact me and talk about your ongoing, your live projects. And By I the way, I should just make a very small insert. This is not a sponsored video. You guys are not giving me any money. I am, <laughs> a, I am asking these questions because I'm genuinely interested, you know? Yes. Uh, probably I, I should make, I should, I should say why I'm interested. It's because one I'm new the, as well, you know, I'm, I'm learning on the way. It's a, a very, very often one of the questions that we get asked, especially mm -hmm. on, uh, on my personal YouTube channel, is how do you make money once you don't want to do production anymore? Because, yes. you know, production can be very stressful. So the idea is that uh, very often people say, well, you know, the market is saturated and there is nothing else that you can invent new. And to yes. be honest with you, what you guys have invented is nothing new because, you know, it's uh, courses, it's education. Mm -hmm. But 
the, the topic that you're going to cover is something that nobody has ever really come up with, you know, which I think it's, uh, it's the key in, uh, in uh, creating innovation also. Yes, yes, exactly. And we're always trying to innovate. And I think by having more people engage on these concepts, you can grow better and faster, you know. Yeah. And that's why I have a good belief that this is going to be our year. Um, but my passion is light. So I, I used to do everything, social media, newsletters, talking to clients, trying to sell. And I also have to thank Jeff from City Active. He supports us a lot. I mean, we, we did a lot of training thanks to his amazing contact and database. But it's not enough. We need somebody engaged on the phone calls, direct calls, talking about the product. And while Sony is talking about the product, I should be here innovating new ways to give him to promote. At least this is our model. This is what we're trying to do. This is going to be a topic uh, soon that I'm going to 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 discuss uh, in one of my videos because the, oh, nice. one of the problems that I think freelancers very often have is that they completely underestimate the the aspect of taking care of the business. You know. Yes. When I made the video about uh, how much money uh, you should charge for an architectural image, that video was, so to say, a best case scenario. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you have all the accounting, you have all the, you know, go to the tax office, uh, yeah. take care of like running after clients that they don't pay you. Yeah. So in a way, the way we sorted out the problem, at least with the D2 conference, was by giving the job to a person that had a lot more experience than us. You that see? person is Christian, you know, and Christian yeah, is always, Christian. you met him, he's always on top of the stuff. And, uh, you know, sometimes he, we say he's Austrian, but he acts a little bit more like a Swiss <laughs> <laughs> because he's very precise. But this is yeah. a very big aspect that sometimes uh, freelancers simply don't uh, don't consider, you know. Yes. And actually, this could be one great way to overcome uh, this inability. Of yeah. course, it costs money because you have to invest in a person yes. that takes care of this. Exactly. But in the long run, it has some advan a lot of advantages, actually. I think it already proves because, I mean, January was always slow, to be honest, the last two years. But we just had the best January ever because we have somebody dedicated on selling the product. We know it's a good product because we have amazing feedback all this year from every client that we had, but that doesn't mean that we can sell it. You know, <laughs> it's a good product. You need somebody driving this somewhere in a daily basis. The, if I if I'm going on it on a trip for ten days, I cannot sell on the way. So you need somebody always engaged on that. So I think this way you can get the results faster. You know. How how long did you guys work on building a, a creative lighting? It was like one year. I mean, before I went back to Greece to officially run it, we spent a lot of time, as I said, on researching, creating the material, talking to clients. I mean, even going to events. I think the first year I took was around 12 events in one year. In the same time, went to United States for a month, talking to clients, not offering anything, just talking to them and understand the need. Yeah. And then went back two months later, offering on-site training, whoever was actually interested in that, and then we grow the idea and we said, you know what, we should have a base for the workshops, the London studio. Client come to us. In the same time, we had the client saying we cannot travel or we don't have the time or we don't have the budget. And that's why we created another idea to have live courses, short ones in modules and offer them online live because it's part of our philosophy to offer only on live courses, interactive. Yeah. I don't want to have recorded versions, people maybe just pause it, whatever. I want it to be engaged, talking to me while I present and ask questions. Although yeah. economically it would make a lot more sense to just record it, put it online and then I you know. sell it because I you know. can sell like thousands. But, you know, it's a lot more dedicated if you are live. We're doing it every month and it's always live. People can ask the questions, they have support after the workshop and we realized it needs to be short because they're busy. Yeah. And that's why we're not giving a full day online. We're giving a module of two or three hours on specific targets, like the philosophy or exterior workflow or introduction to Corona, but it's a short course. And it can be easy for them to so join, listen, do some interaction, and then go back to work. 
Okay. And so we, we're developing new things all the time. And while we speak, very good, we, um, this is a very good idea. I have to say. Yes. Okay, well, I'm glad you like it. And I was about to say that I'm already working through courses now, which I'm very excited about. Finally, I'm going to talk about color. I was always afraid. It's a hard topic. I'm telling you that. I know. I know. I can imagine. I remember one of my happen. one of my first experience was uh, at the very first D2 conference we had Adam, uh, one of the uh, Corona, uh, so to say. Adam is not a founder, but he's like a director or something, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a, a partner. partner. He's yes. a partner yeah. Sorry, Adam, if you're watching this. Yes, I still love Maybe you. Maybe he's so an owner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam. <laughs> But he, he did a, a fantastic talk about colors and color theory. And because, you know, sometimes we forget, but Adam was one of the most influential artists in the archivist business. Oh, yeah. He, I admire his work, yeah. The stuff that he did was just stunning, you know. And, uh, and now having him working at the back with Corona is just a, such a valuable asset, you know, oh, to, yes. to the product itself. And I can understand your uh, you being scared about yeah. talking about color. It's it's a little bit like you know talking about money. People yes. <laughs> always think that they know better. Although you know I'm not yeah. saying that I know better. It's just that I'm trying to share a little bit of my experience. Yes. You know sometimes people ask me, you know why do you know so much? I'm like yeah. uh, listen, I meet 300 artists a year, yeah. and I ask them the same question all the time. So, you know, I just share yeah. what I hear from other people. Then, of course, plus, okay. you know, my own experience and so on. But um, mm -hmm. for me, even this talk that we're having, it's extremely mm -hmm. important because, you know, now yeah, I know me. a little bit more about how you guys manage successfully this business. Yes, it took us a while. As I said, new business always have the risks and I'm new as well. And I had a lot of my soldiers, you know, I came back to Greece and started a new business. I have to travel like every month all around the world presenting on events, but it's worth it because now we know where we're going. We invest the time and now it's time to get this back, you know, and I'm enjoying every aspect of it, you know, every new course I'm developing and I'm not, a f now with my research, I can talk about color, but before I was like, no, no, no color, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, cool that you're saying this because very often, uh, one of the criticism that I hear is that, you know, people usually go into teaching because it's easy you know, mm -hmm. but it's not. it's not. And what you're doing, it's, it's actually a big commitment. I mean, you have yeah. to travel from Greece yeah. every month going to a place. I mean, traveling, for traveling for leisure, it's fun. Yeah, but it you is. have to go and travel and stay in a place yeah. and just, you know, maybe you are in a hotel, you go in the morning, you teach, you're at home tired, you need to sleep. It's a hard job, you know, it's not no, it, like people say, oh, I'm going to make a workshop. I'm going to, they see the number at the end of the workshop and they're going to say, I'm going to make this amount of uh, thousands of euros. <laughs> I remember in New York, I was going with a laptop on my back, a meeting to another meeting, and I was presenting the same presentation five, six times per day, every day, every day. And then I was staying another hour to understand what they feel about it. Yeah. What you know, what issues them I have at the moment about rendering or workflows or re relationship with artists, and I was capturing all these details. But and thank God I had Dan Harper as well to help me. But this is tough, you know, this is like hardcore stuff. And you come back, business needs to grow as well. You need to do the emails, you need to do social media updates, you need to all these things. It's just like, oh God, and then you need to go and train as well because you are in training. This is what you do, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, it's, it's um it's exciting. I, I'm not was, complaining, but it's not easy. There was a period where uh, you know when with V Ray for Cinema for D we were going around and I had uh, I had uh, courses in Italy, I had uh, talks say in in uh, in Amsterdam. So I was on the way for mm -hmm. a very long time. And people were writing me like, Oh, lucky you that you're gonna go to Amsterdam. <laughs> and I was like I've been to Amsterdam and I didn't even have the time to drink a beer. Yeah, you see, that's, that's, yeah. You know, and I was like, I went to the, to the, to the airport and then to the hotel. Then you, you must talk. Have. Yeah. And then you go home, you're tired and you fall asleep. So, yes. and you do it because you have a mission in your head, you know? 
you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you're I know doing what you mean. it. You need to be focused. Yes, exactly. You need to be focused. Otherwise, this is not going to work the way you want. You're not going to get the benefit out of the investment to travel around the world. It's an investment of time and money, but you need to be focused. You need to get something back. And when you get something back, then you can start a join, you know, but not before. <laughs> you need to be, <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Now I want to go back to Europe for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, listen, it's uh, it's such a pleasure to catch up with you because one of the things that, uh, you know, probably I should have said it before starting this interview is that despite the fact that you are a super talented and professional guy, you are just a lot of fun to, to talk to, you know? <laughs> You know, and, we, need, we need to enjoy life. I always say that it's 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 part of the business as well. You need to enjoy. Uh, not anymore, but my motto used to say, I used to always say, you know, party hard and, and work harder. Yeah, I believe on that. You know, you need to enjoy life in the same time. Next day, you, you're, you're responsible. You need to deliver something. You're not going to miss that because you party last night. So if you cannot do it, don't party. If yeah. you can, be my guest. Give me a call. <laughs> but it needs to be that. Enjoy life, but work hard. I, I can't live without my work. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's at the work. end, it's what defines us, right? Yes, yes. But you need balance, you know. If you feel you're giving too much in the work, take a break. If you think you're parting too much, stop parting, go to work. Simple as <laughs> 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 <Influence> that. <laughs> it is, yeah. Dude, already... listen, we are already a couple of minutes above the 30 minutes mark. That's fine. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time for doing this. Uh, I am pretty sure that after this uh, chat, people will be curious to find you. I'm going to put the uh, your page on the yes, on the screen Yeah. so that people can actually... They can feel free to give me any questions or drop me an email. I'm... More than happy to answer any any questions you might have. Exactly, Even and also an inspiration there, question. It doesn't matter. Is there any like uh, way for them to reach you faster? Like uh, you're always on Facebook, which I think I'm, it's. Uh... I'm Facebook. They can even contact the Creative Lighting Channel. I'm super. I'm supervising, so I will take the message straight away. So okay. even if they want an email or drop me a Facebook message, I will see it and I will respond. This, you know, this is fantastic. It can be a business question or it can be something inspiring or advice about art or how to become a better artist, I will be more than happy to reply any question. And I think hopefully we're going to see each other again in Vienna. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be good. <laughs> I had an amazing time last time, I have to say. You guys yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a fun place. <laughs> it's a fun place. And at the same time, people sharing knowledge and they're learning a lot. So I, I came back, I remember, to Greece very inspired after this trip. You know, I learned a lot. I also offer my knowledge as well, so it was good. It, it was a great lecture, what you did. I really remember it. It was something that people were really talking about it for a while. And, it was good uh, feedback. I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, of course, yeah. of course. It, it, means, it, it makes you understand that you're doing something good. It helps you to keep developing your stuff uh, you know, and, and keep you on the edge. It's like, I need to work harder. I want to make better things. Dude, thanks a lot for doing this. I'm going to stop you. the recording. Don't go anywhere so that, anywhere. Say, <laughs> so that I can say goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you, dude. Thank you.